Good morning. Hello. Starting out day one here in Anchorage, Alaska. It is 1030 in the morning, I think. Honestly, it's not that early. I really should have gotten an earlier start this morning, but, but I'm lazy and it's day one. So I wanted to get some sleep. So I'm just working on packing up the car, making sure that everything is ready. There she is. Ugh. I'll go through and kind of show some of the stuff that I have going on in here, but um, yeah, I'm planning on camping in the car. I'm planning on having meals in the car, so it should be, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. So just here in the back, I have all of the stuff in the under floor area that is not going to really be touched at all, which is going to be fantastic because that leaves all of this space for my mattress and for my giant suitcase that I still have to load in here in a few minutes. But cleaning supplies, plenty of cleaning supplies, just in case anything happens on the road. And then coming in the back, I have my little fridge, which I think is going to be a fantastic addition here. Just some waters and some protein drinks in there for now. And then coming around to the front here, my little snack shack. But the most important part, get the front open. Coming around to the front, in the front here is where all the really important stuff is. So we got the Tesla mobile charger in here with the NEMA 1450 adapter which is going to be very important for some of the places that I'm going to have to stop and charge, especially overnight in some of the campgrounds. Extension cord, just in case. Tire mobility kit, because obviously I don't have a spare tire, because I have all that extra stuff shoved underneath. And then I have my CCS Combo 1 adapter. This is going to be, like, crucial getting through Canada, because there are no Tesla chargers, like, anywhere in the Yukon. And then I have... My 30 amp to NEMA 1450 adapter because some of the campgrounds in Canada do not have a regular like 1450 plug in spot. So let's get the rest of the stuff loaded up and we'll see where we go. Like everything is gonna fit nicely. Got my like little outlet here inverter so that I can power things in the car if I need to. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Actually, I really think that'll be fine. And I still have room to be able to open my little fridge, which it's on right now. And this is something really important that I knew that I would need. So I've had this for a while. It's a battery backup. It's got enough power to run the fridge for about 18 hours. So that'll be really great, especially when I'm camping out. I can plug it into the inverter if I need to, and that'll power everything. So I think, with a few exceptions, I'm almost ready to hop in the car. So as a general aside for the entire video and the entire series that I'm planning on doing, I don't have any audio recording equipment. I just have my iPhone, but I also have my little DJI Osmo Mobile 6. That'll be great for stabilizing things and hopefully making some of the shots better because there are gonna be some really amazing places that we're gonna be going through. I know I don't seem very excited, but there's some, uh, there's some stretches I'm very nervous about. So one step at a time. All right, so let's get the charger put away correctly. There she goes so that we can make sure that she sleeps tight while we're driving. Getting in. Ah, okay. So we're currently at 92% on the battery. And just to show where we're at, odometer, 1,500 miles. So I just took delivery of this not too long ago. I'll talk about that later. But 1,500 miles, we're at 92% battery. 
First stretch of the drive is gonna be the most difficult in terms of like elevation gain and distance, and I'm kind of nervous about it. So we're gonna head over to one of the free level two chargers in Anchorage to basically top up from 90 to 100%. Hopefully it won't take like more than two hours because I kind of want to get on the road at this point. And I still need to stop off at the gym because part of the plan is to plan a fitness hop basically once we get packed to like a place where there is a plan of fitness. So we'll head over to the level two charger. We'll top up. Well, actually I need to get some breakfast first and then we'll go to the charger, top up to 100%. And then at that point we'll be ready to leave Anchorage. If you ever go into a store and you're looking for something and you can't find it, really wanted a banana, but I got a protein shake and a donut. Very healthy breakfast. I'm very excited. All right, off to the charger. at the Chugach power supply company, which actually, it's pretty great because they provide these level two chargers, these charge point chargers for free. So I don't think there's a time limit because I've sat here for like four or five hours sometimes just charging. But um, so we got our little J1772 adapter plugged in there. And I guess this would be a great time to kind of do a little walk around to the car itself. All right, so we got our 2023 Tesla Model Y long range. I didn't go performance and I didn't do the one with the 4680 cells because I wanted to get as much range as possible. But here on the front, as you can see, we didn't really do too much with it. We got the paint protection film that you can kind of see here on the front. So I did the custom do-it-yourself paint protection film that you can get from Test Bros and it was pretty fantastic actually. I've never done anything like this before on my own. Couple areas where there's like little bubbles, but I mean, considering the fact that it was only $700 and I did it myself, honestly, not too bad. I was kind of happy with the install. And then I went and got these aftermarket wheels because I did the standard Gemini wheels again, because I knew that I would be doing this trip from Alaska back to the East Coast and then everywhere in between. So I wanted to get these standard 19 inch rims and then I got these aftermarket rims from Yeslack. They're, they're pretty fantastic. I actually really like them and I haven't really noticed any difference in terms of like range or anything. So I really like them. And then overall, yeah, I haven't really done too much else with it. It's a pretty, it's been a pretty solid car. I've had it for about two months now. At some point I'll go into kind of my experience overall with like electric cars. But the nice thing about taking delivery in Alaska was that you get the mud flaps at the front, which, sorry, it's a little dirty. It's Alaska, what are you gonna do? And then you also get the paint protection film standard here on the back. And I believe that's anywhere in like the snow belt or the Pacific Northwest, you get that. And then hardware floor for the cameras, of course, because this was built in May of 2023. And then at the back, because, and this is scientifically proven, if you add a spoiler, to your vehicle, you go three miles an hour faster at all times. It's scientifically proven. Yeah, just a couple little upgrades. And then of course I have my Golden Girl sticker because duh, obviously I have to. It's actually a really nice day here. I might even go for a little walk just because we're gonna be in the car for days. But I mean, basically gonna charge up here, go over a few things, make sure that I have everything planned out. I'm not really doing any in-depth planning for this drive because I've done it in an ice car, oh gosh, five or six times now, going from the East Coast to Alaska and back. So it's not something that like, I feel like I need to do in-depth planning. I just more so want to look on PlugShare and see and make sure that I have all the chargers right. And then there's a couple different campgrounds that I need to check in on because I know that they're open year round, but I don't know what their availability is tonight. And I guess just coming into the inside, got the white interior and then I got my little guy. And of course I got Sophia over there riding shotgun with me, but it's saying about an hour and 45 minutes to get to hundred percent. And I definitely want to get to hundred percent for this first leg of the drive. 
just because elevation gain and it's a about 160 miles to Glen Allen, which is the first charging location. So we're definitely just gonna have to wait until this charges. Hi. Okay. And I've actually gotten the mileage, which is shocking for me. Cause I know all these places, like basically as you go along. I've done this drive enough, both like in my car, as well as for the job that I work here in Alaska, where I can just kind of go places and I like intuitively know where I'm going. But our first stop is going to be in Glen Allen. From where I'm at now at the charger to the level or the DC fast charger in Glen Allen, which is only 50 kilowatts. So we'll be there for like an hour, hour and a half, but that's fine. Um, from here to there is 179 miles, which isn't bad. I'm hoping to get there with like 30% charge because in that way I don't have to stay there too long to charge. Um, just enough time basically just to get some like lunch slash early dinner and then kind of continue on. And then from there, we're going to Toke, Alaska. I'm not anticipating, or at least I'm not really wanting to cross the Canadian border until tomorrow, just because um, I really don't want to drive at night if I can avoid it. <laughs> um, so from Glen Allen to Toke, Alaska is going to be 138 miles. And when we get to Toke, Alaska, rather than using the DC fast charger that they have there, we're going to just camp out overnight and then continue on from there. So I'm excited. Um, we only have like an hour and 20 minutes left. One thing that I have loved about having a Tesla, especially when I'm sitting here doing nothing but charging is I love to come in here to the theater and go to Disney Plus. I'm watching Ahsoka right now and I absolutely love that show. Some of the best Star Wars that we've ever gotten, probably controversial. I don't care, fight me. No, I don't so, think you understand. I'm obsessed. Um, but yeah, Netflix, YouTube, I love that. And then I've also gotten kind of good at some of these games. I didn't do Sudoku, but I found that this is an excellent time killer, especially when you're waiting. And I love, there's a little Cybertruck. This is not a plug for the Cybertruck. I don't have one on order, nor do I plan on getting one. But I think this is so cool. And coming from other electric vehicles and many other like internal combustion engine vehicles, I think this is amazing. 99%, 30 minutes remaining. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug because I don't really see the point in sitting here for another 30 minutes just for 1%. So let's actually click on that and see what we've got. Yeah, I know that there's a whole other menu that you can go into that's like maintenance, but I really don't want to or have the patience or feel the necessity to do that. So let's get out and unplug this. Let's see, what did we add? Oh, 9.2 kilowatts. And this is why I love this one, because it's free. And then just go in here, open the butthole. Close, perfect. And put this where it goes. Now, where, oh, it's saying 100%. 329 miles, it's saying I'll get. We're not gonna get 329 miles, but 100%, so ready to go and let's go to the gym. Have it set to the Planet Fitness in Eagle River, Alaska. Not too bad, 15 miles, 93% arrival. So let's go. A few inches later. Workout done, showered, smelling good, feeling good, ready to get this. No, I don't do videos in the gym. I think it's obnoxious, especially Planet Fitness. And this one was busy today. This gym is very busy today. But next stop, Glen Allen. First, I think I might get some garbage food, maybe some Taco Bell or something if they have it. We'll have to see what's over here, but yeah. <music> So I decided to stop off at Dairy Queen and get some food because I am trash. But this also gives me a chance to take a look 
at the route to Glen Allen. And the Tesla GoGo machine here, and it's estimator, 137 miles to Glen Allen from Palmer, Alaska, which is where I'm at now. And it's estimating 29%, which is exactly what I was hoping for. I very much hope that's what we get because that would be fantastic. So I'm gonna eat this trash food because I'm craving already. Day one of the road trip. I really should not be starting out like this, but oh well. A few minutes later. So like, it was good, but like, not good? If that mean, okay, so like, it was good. Like I got the double cheeseburger with like bacon and stuff on it. We do not care. It was good in the moment, but you have a meal, but I need to go wash my hands directly afterwards and also brush my teeth. That's kind of how I feel. And like, I definitely want, I definitely went and washed my hands and brushed my teeth because I know in the moment it was great. But later on today, when I get to the place where I'm gonna be camping tonight, I'm gonna be feeling very differently about what I just did. Anyways, onward! Um, ciao. Anyway, so. Oh. I'm bad at this vlogging thing. Never done this before, by the way. Um, leaving Palmer, Alaska, 85%. Hopefully we'll get to Glen Allen with 29, 30%. So hopefully we'll get there at like 6.30, 6.45. But the entire kind of mentality for this trip is I'm taking my time because I have done this drive no less than six times. The last time I did this drive coming up here from the East Coast. I did it back in May and it took me seven days to do it. And when I got here, I was so ridiculously tired because I was driving for like 14 hours a day. Of course I had a Subaru Forester, so it was a little bit different. But this time like, not only is it I want to take my time because I have to, because I have to stop and charge, but also I just want to slow down and actually enjoy it. So a lot of the places I'm gonna be going, stopping off, taking pictures, you know, like I said, once we get, once I get to the U.S. border, I kind of want to go to like Yellowstone, a few other couple places, but just sort of laying the groundwork here. Um, I also just like do a lot of driving anyway, and I kind of just want to enjoy it, you know? rather noisy place because the view is pretty amazing. For a little bit of a restroom stop but this stop is pretty fantastic i'll just show you more here in a minute <laughs> Definitely not angry about the hike. Definitely can't be mad about that. Oh my goodness. Whew. 
Just a quick mile round trip out and back. Not bad, but I mean, still, come on. That scenery, it's so beautiful. It's like six o'clock. Not gonna get to Glen Allen until like seven. Should probably stop stopping and just pedal to the floor. So we're about, give or take 40 minutes from um, Glen Allen. And my car is now flashing a warning saying, hey, you're almost too far away from charger because we're at 49% state of charge right now. And there's only two char, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's two superchargers in the entire state of Alaska. One of them is in Chugiak. One of them is down on the Kenai Peninsula. The next supercharger that I'm gonna come across, I don't think is until I get to somewhere around Dawson Creek. So it's like 1500 miles from here. So I think it's funny that Tesla is like, hey, you need to find a charger or go back to the one behind you <laughs> because it's not picking up on the DC, like the public DC fast chargers that are spread out from my current location to the rest of the way to the next supercharger. <laughs> bustling metropolis got here 31 percent which is better than i wanted actually and honestly the efficiency wasn't bad 273 watt hours per mile so not bad all right let's go see what this charger situation is because this is recharge alaska let's see I'm not sure what any of this means so we got the Chatamo, and we got the CCS. All right, well, let me go and get, oh, there's already an adapter here. Look at that. So that was a Chatamo adapter, and I guess I could have technically used that, but I wanted to break out my CCS adapter and see what that looks like. So it's charging. Let's see what this says. It's charging at 44 kilowatt hours. I mean, 55 minutes until we get to 80%. And we'll definitely need to get to 80% so that we can get to the campground. So we got some time to kill. So she's done charging. Let's go get this out. I'm a little frustrated because I was really hoping to not drive in the dark and I've already managed to mess that up on day one. <laughs> but let's get this thing disconnected. This thing disconnected like that. Get this thing stowed. Oh. That was more difficult than I thought it would be. Get this trunk open, frunk open, back in the box here. I know you can't see anything that's going on. Literally can't see anything. All right, so we're headed to Sourdough Campground up in Toke, Alaska. Hopefully get there with around 22%. Initially it was trying to route me to the supercharger way back in Togiak, but I'm not entirely sure what that was about. So about two and a half hours to get there, 136 miles. It's very dark outside, so I won't be taking any more video, but let us proceed. So made it to Toke, Alaska, the campgrounds. There's like no one here, which is kind of low key terrifying, but made it here at 28% charge so i'm gonna go out and see what this plug situation is i think it should be a nema 1450 so i should be able to get 50 amps but <laughs> 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 
we'll see. Um, but yeah, it's 11.21 p.m. and I'm very happy to be here because I'm getting tired. So in kind of an interesting situation here, the 30 amp service here isn't working so i had to plug it into the regular 110 outlet so basically just going to be pulling enough power tonight to stay warm because i'll put it in camp mode but thankfully there is a ccs charger here in the toke area that i can hit up in the morning so i'm gonna call it a wrap here on day one i'm gonna crawl in the back and bundle up and go to sleep so yeah see you in the morning Good morning, starting of day two, and I was very rudely awoken this morning by a very angry campground owner. So, a little backstory. Over here in Toke, there is the one CCS fast charger that I'm gonna head over to now to charge because I couldn't get the 30 amp service to work last night. Wow. So I just plugged into the regular wall outlet. So there was just enough juice on that to keep me running through the night. But I called the lady last night and she's like, yeah, you know, campground's open, but it's no restrooms, no dumping. It's just electricity and dry camping. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, didn't get in until it was like 1130 last night. So I grabbed one of these envelopes that she has at the camp office and was like, all right, I'll fill it out, put it in the drop box in the morning before I leave. Well, she comes walking up this morning while I'm sleeping, unplugs my car, bangs on the driver's side window, and like throws this other envelope on the windshield. <coughs> Very aggressively saying no electric vehicles. And when I rolled down the window, she was very animated to put it nicely. What the fuck? So I'm gonna skedaddle out of here and go charge fully and get some food. Because after that interaction, I'm very hungry. What was reason. the reason? I had a reason. What was the reason? reason. What was the I reason? Just I just explained. Post charging. So we are up at 60%. It took an hour to get from 35 to 60% because the charger was only 17 kilowatts, which is fun. 17 kilowatts. But at the same time, you can't be upset because. The guy was super nice. He didn't want to be filmed, so that's why I didn't take any videos in there. But, um, I'm going to get on the road. So from here, we're going to Beaver Creek. So we'll be going through the border checkpoint into Canada. And from my recollection and what I've heard, most of the chargers between here and Whitehorse in Canada are free. And they're DC fast chargers only like 30 kilowatts to 50 kilowatts, so it's gonna be a slow roll, but, <laughs> but, but, they're free, so who cares? So, let's get on the road. So I got another protein shake, protein drink, protein drink, protein drink, from the little convenience store, and I got like, look at this giant, look at this giant chicken. It was like chicken strip. Look at that, look at that chicken strip. Ah, chicken strip. So for this stretch here, I'm gonna be rolling with no heat. It is currently 33 degrees outside. So I have the heated steering wheel turned all the way up. And so I'm rolling with heated seats on, heated steering wheel on. And I've got my most comfortable and like insulated sweatpants and socks on because I only have 59% battery. We have estimated 194 miles of range, but <laughs> I know that's not accurate because it's a Tesla and I have 100 miles to drive. So we're gonna be going a little bit slower than I probably want to and colder, but we have to make it, so. going to be obvious and it's not going to be well you can actually see from my bear bells here that are just jangling jang <laughs> that is not correct this stretch of road is very rough like it's actually my favorite because it's kind of like being on a roller coaster but i'm sure the car itself hates it because i've 
definitely come close to bottoming out at least twice. So, fun times. But at least they are working on it. It looks like they got some construction going on up here. But it's also like dirt roads through a lot of these sections. So like right now we're going through a dirt road section. Next. Very fun. I can only imagine the kind of rocks that's kicking up. Good thing I got paint protection film. Yay. A lot of people don't know this, but Alaska has four seasons as well. Winter, late winter, construction, and early winter. <laughs> Brother, this guy stinks! Stupid. There are occasions when you're traveling and there's construction in which you might be sitting here for a while. This is one of those examples. I've been sitting here for about 20 minutes. Probably gonna continue to sit here, but there's the Tesla. Just sitting and relaxing. Honestly, it's not that bad. It's like 40 degrees out here and no rain. Not a bad place to be hanging out. Let's just hope that there are no bears that come out of the woods. That would be kind of fun. 24 hours later. So we've reached the United States Alaskan Canadian border. They have this cool national boundary statue here, but one of the things that I love is that as you come along here, you look off in the distance, you can actually see the cut in the trees off as far as the eye can see in either direction along the Canadian border on either side. And then coming over here, lots of information about the Canadian National Parks, especially Kluwani, which is the Canadian side of Wrangell St. Elias National Park. And of course you have the Yukon sign, finally in Canada, 165th of the way there. And of course I would be remiss to not include the Alaska sign. Of course, I saw this back in May when I was on my way in, but it's still really cool. It's so beautiful out here. Honestly, it's kind of peaceful and the fall colors are fantastic. Right before the major snowfall hits. So it's like the perfect time to actually do this drive because you get the beautiful fall colors. It's not raining too much. Now onward to Canadian Customs and our first Canadian Charger stop. Onward! Onward. So we are in Canada, Canada. Now I get to find and figure out where these electric vehicle chargers are here in Beaver Creek, Canada. I know that there are two of them, a Chatamo and a CCS, but I have to figure out where they are. I don't have cell reception, so I have to do it with my eyeball. Should be fun. You know, I made it sound like it was gonna be a lot more difficult, but it actually wasn't that difficult. So let's see what this requires. It's a Flow EV charger. All right, so let's see. Output, use Flow mobile app or access card. Okay, so it looks like you need to download the app. Well, considering I don't have cell reception, this should be interesting. It's only 24 kilowatts, which means we'll be here for another hour. Okay, let me figure this out. All right, peoples of the internets, we are going. Oh my gosh, look at that. We are just cooking at 20 kilowatts, which is not much better than the last charger at 17, to be honest with you, this ABB unit. Ugh. I kind of wish I was Kyle from out of spec. I would know what this meant. All I know is it's an ABB unit, made in Italy. Fun times. All right, so let's go see how long it's gonna take to get to 80% because the fun thing about this part of the Yukon is that I do not want to be stranded. So I'm gonna pull as much power as we can. Two hours, 20 minutes to get to 80%. Okay, well, all right. I guess we're gonna be waiting a while. This is gonna be fun. Brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same. So yeah, I am not going to be doing it out of spec style. 
uh, especially as we go into the Yukon and Upper British Columbia, because unlike in other places in the lower 48, where there are redundancies and plenty of superchargers I can go to, there is only one fast charger every 120 miles or so. So if I don't top up to 80% every time I do this, then, and I get to a charger, then there's a chance that I could be screwed. So I'm definitely gonna be stopping every time I see a charger for the foreseeable future and just topping up because I don't wanna be stranded anywhere, which sucks because that's gonna add a good probably six hours to this whole trip, but there's nothing that I can really do about it. So yeah, that's life on the road in the Yukon in a Tesla. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is kind of cool. Kind of tells you where you are here in Beaver Creek, Canada. I walked around and there's nothing, I mean nothing happening in this town, but this is kind of cool. And also kind of intimidating to know that I am almost as far away from New York, which is my ultimate destination, roughly, to Mexico City. <sighs> and I'm only charging at 20 kilowatts. Well, that's fun. This is fun. This is, this is fun fun, right? This is what the kids call fun. Lot of boring math later. Alright. So just got back on the road. Didn't even bother to like grab any food because I am like so frustrated. Up to 79% and took two hours to get there. Roughly 22 kilowatt hours charging. Less than optimal. Than that, even more than that, the next charger that I have to go to is also a 24 kilowatt hour charger. So I am going to hope that I only have to top off there like slightly because the charger after that is 50 kilowatt hours. So it's a lot of hurry up and wait, which is fine because like it's free. So I can't really complain. The charging's free. So I, I can't complain too much, but <sighs> we'll make it to Whitehorse at some point today. So I had to stop and take a video of this landscape because this is just incredible. Look at this. I mean, some of these places that we drive along, this Alcan Highway is just amazing. Like the silence is just, like the silence is deafening. Oh my goodness. All right, so we're just outside of Destruction Bay in Yukon Territory. Beautiful scenery, beautiful place. This is another 24 kilowatt hour charger. I'm not sitting here for two hours because there's nothing around. So I'm basically just going to plug in for like 10, 15 minutes because I'm at 41%. And the next one, which is a 50 kilowatt charger, is only 70 miles away. And it's projected on 136 miles right now. I know there's some elevation gain coming up. So I'm going to plug in for like 10, 15 minutes and then go. Because I want to go. I want to go. <sighs> so there are certain places in the US and Canada around the world where... People have their own interpretations of Tesla and electric vehicles and so on and so forth. And especially when I'm out in the middle of absolutely nowhere, like I am now, it makes me a little nervous when I see people pulling up, like this particular instance, the person was driving by, clearly looked over, saw me charging, stopped in the middle of the road, turned around and pulled in and he's driving a pickup truck that's with a lift kit and everything else in it like that makes me a little nervous i'm not a skittish person i'm definitely not even a person that avoids confrontation i just don't necessarily think it's always worth 
confrontation, most confrontations. So I generally just sort of, you know, don't interact unless I feel like it's beneficial. But in this instance, I had my guard up because I was like, all right, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I barely have cell reception. There's nobody around. So this person pulls up and I'm getting ready for onslaught because there have been several times already this trip where people have yelled things out their windows. People have come up to me and said some pretty nasty things. And, you know, like I said, being out in the middle of nowhere, I don't want anything to happen. The gentleman rolls out his window. He's like, dude, I love your Tesla. I love that you're out here. Where, how did you get, how did you get out here? Where did you come from? How does it charge? And it struck up like a 10 minute conversation. And I was, you know, I'm not one to necessarily judge people before they say what they have to say. But I feel like given the context of things, eh. Anyways, 15 minutes at the charger. We're back up to 48%. We're gonna go on to the next charger, the 50 kilowatts, so. What the fuck? 853, Haynes Junction, 50 kilowatt hour charger. Ugh, I'm so excited to not be sitting here for two hours. So it turns out I didn't need to stop because I got here with 25% battery, but that's fine because that means that we're sitting here even less for an even shorter amount of time. And that means I might actually get to Whitehorse at a decent time tonight. Yay! I'm so excited. All right, yes, 43 kilowatts. That's a weird thing to be happy about, but fastest I've gotten so far on this trip. What is it saying? Ah, oh, it's still one hour and five minutes. But at least it's pulling 43 kilowatts. Plenty of time to plan out my next stop. A little longer than a few minutes later. So I was bad. I forgot to log what I was doing at the last charger. So I left, so I left the last charger with 59% and I just got to Whitehorse, Yukon, Canada, which I'm very happy to be here. Um, I got here at 22% and now I am actually plugged into one of the city's free level two chargers that's rated at about 7.1 kilowatt hours. It's free. So this is where I'm going to camp overnight. And I'm, this is dumb. I love Tim Hortons. I think that their food is great. Their um, donuts are fantastic. Stupid light. And I'm very excited to not only try to find a gym in Whitehorse tomorrow to work out, but also to have some Tim Hortons. Don't judge me. I love it. So I'm going to sign off on day two. Kind of a long day, mostly waiting, not a lot of driving, but um, yeah, see you on day three. So something that I've really come to enjoy my first two nights is this camp mode and the fact that not only can I plug the car in and it will stay a comfortable temperature, especially since it's supposed to get down into the upper 20s tonight. It's also just sort of a really nice ambiance and I really like it. Yeah. Good night. <laughs>
there no exit this way? Oh, this one's here. In 500 feet, turn left onto Lambert Street. Workout complete here at is it Better Bodies in Whitehorse, Alaska. Oh my god, Whitehorse, Yukon, Canada. I'm just like drying out my shirt a little bit because I did leg day today and I turn into the sweatiest human being on the planet. Also, Whitehorse, can we talk about some of these men that you have here and how attractive they are? It's not fair. You're in the middle of nowhere. How dare you hog all these men? Anyways, no, I don't think you understand. I'm up. Best. So we're gonna head over to get some breakfast real quick and then we're gonna hit the road So just a little quick efficiency test. So just so far on this trip We've gone 721 miles between day one and day two. today We have about 450 that we have to go and we've done 271 watt hours per mile, which honestly is not that bad like not that bad at all um still not getting epa i mean obviously most teslas don't and that's kind of a controversial topic right now um with the whole tesla is not getting their range a controversial topic right now especially given the fact that it's come out that there was a team supposedly assembled to deal with people that were complaining about range and range losses and this report that was put out that they supposedly built their a logarithm that's built into the car itself that tells you how many miles you can go on a charge um it's designed to be overly optimistic I don't know. I've actually, I think it's interesting because the report, I think it was the Wall Street Journal. I can't remember. Um, they said that when I tap on this little percentage next to the battery indicator and it gives you your mileage and then it gives you the percentage, um, it says that's not necessary. Oh, it says that that's not accurate, but I found that when I use the GPS, it's the opposite. So when I've used the GPS in here and it tells you what the estimated percentage is that would when it tells you the estimated percentage that you'll have when you get there, I found that I'm easily able to get at least two to three percent, if not more, better than that. So the other day when I was headed to a charger, it said I would get there at 22%, I got there at 29%. I also was driving with no heat on. I do under the speed limit, I was doing like 55, 60 miles an hour. Um, maybe that's why, but I have it's interesting. It's interesting. So I went to Tim Hortons, which is a Canadian staple. And in my opinion, uh, significantly better Dunkin' Donuts. Um, they're just some things that Canada does right, and I think Tim Hortons is one of them, because their donuts are far superior to anything you're gonna get from Dunkin' Donuts, and they have a lot of really great, like, healthy food options. So I got this cilantro lime bowl that has rice and grilled chicken and lettuce and cucumbers and cilantro, like a cilantro, like a cilantro lime sauce on it. Really fantastic. Really great lunch, honestly. I love coming here. The only thing, the Tim Horton in Whitehorse is always packed. Like the drive-through is always ridiculous. And there's always at least like a 15 minute wait to get food when you go in. So that's how you know, not only is it good, but also like it's really the only game in town. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go, and we're gonna grab some Gatorade because I am definitely dehydrated. I did not drink enough water yesterday, so I need to stay on top of that today and get some Gatorade or something, and then we're gonna hit the road. Uh, day three is frustrating. So it's now 1.32, I'm not leaving Whitehorse, I'm just now leaving Whitehorse at 1.32 p.m. 
in the afternoon and I wanted to get out of here way sooner than that because I know it's gonna take a long time to charge. I was able to get my Gatorade, but two very frustrating things happened. So I had to call the bank and I was on the phone with them for 45 minutes to confirm some information because of course, even though I set a travel notification, things went awry. And then I called Northern Rockies Lodge in um, British Columbia, and that's where I'm staying tonight. But they have a level two charger, but they will not run it overnight. So they only allow people to charge during the day, and they charge 57 Canadian dollars, like flat rate, to run the electric vehicle charger. And then they don't allow people to stay over. So this campground, they have an electric vehicle charger, but they only run it between like 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. because their generator run, and they charge 57 Canadian dollars flat rate to charge and run it. But you can't stay there and charge overnight, which is what I would need, unless you also book a room because they don't allow car camping. But you can camp in your car if you book an RV site. So I had to go online and book an RV site that has 30 amp service, hope that my adapter works. I'll probably stop off at one of these RV uh, campgrounds along the way to see if they have an adapter because I don't know if mine works with my car charger. Um, so there's a distinct possibility that I get there, 30 amp service isn't working because my adapter doesn't work and then I have to pay another $57 tomorrow and sit there for another six hours and charge. <sighs> On to the next fast charger. So I don't know how well you can hear me, but uh, we're in Teslin, Yukon, plugged into this flow charger, 50 kilowatt hour flow charger, and they're building a new bridge. That's what that's what all the sound is. They're building a new bridge back there because apparently the old one wasn't good. To be fair, the old one is kind of falling apart, but it's saying 50 minutes to get to 80%, and we definitely need to get to 80% because I think the next stop is like 170 miles away. So gonna let this charge. I'm gonna go find a restroom because I have to utilize the little ladies room and get a snack. So hopefully when I come back, this will be almost done. I have to get to the campground tonight by 10 o'clock. I don't know if that's gonna happen. So I'm gonna have to really play the game of like drive efficiently so that, that way I can get to the next charger, but also like drive quickly because I don't have a lot of time. So we'll see how this goes. But apparently there's also a wildfire somewhere out here. So the air quality isn't very good. It's been a lovely day so far. Just fantastic. I love it. <coughs> this is such a beautiful little town and I got some very healthy food, a cheeseburger and fries. I'm so proud of myself. But something that I was thinking while I was walking around was you have these general stores and you have the restaurants and none of the restaurants or the general store had a salad on the menu, like none of them. It's all like cheeseburger fries, deep fried burger, fat, nasty, gross, like who eats that kind of stuff? I mean, I do. But on a road trip, when you're in a car with white seats? <laughs> No, God, no. All right, anyways, I'm gonna eat this delicious food. We got 15 minutes left, so I'm excited. So we are at 80%. We have 162 miles to go, I believe, until we get to the next stop. So we're gonna punch it because I think I don't have, well, just get uh, the debate, right? The debate that I'm having with myself is like, I don't have to, like, I called the hotel and I don't have to be there until 11. That's when like their hard cutoff is. So I don't have to punch it and I don't really want to punch it because I'm going to go through more energy and then it's going to take longer to charge when I get to the next charger. It's a whole thing. But I definitely don't want to go as slow as I was going before because again, for the third night in a row, I'm going to be driving after sunset. So mostly because I decided to go to the gym this morning and it took me a while, but whatever. 
I also could have left there earlier. I was watching RuPaul's Drag Race compilations, whatever. Onward to the future, or to the next charger. Brother, this guy stinks! Not even really paying attention. Didn't even realize that I wasn't taking any videos, but we've gone a thousand miles. Look at that. A thousand miles from Anchorage on our way to Massachusetts, East Coast. This drive has been particularly interesting because it started out around 340 watt hours per mile, but we've been coming downhill, so it's been going down. But we've stayed pretty consistent at about 271 watt hours per mile. And something that I really wish that you could do with this system is I wish that you could change watt hours per mile to miles per kilowatt hour. Um, I know that like overall it doesn't really matter too much, but I, my mind, I operate in miles per kilowatt hour just because I'm used to miles per gallon. So I feel like there should be a way to change that just so that you kind of have a basis because I find myself going through in the average here and dividing 1003 by 272 to get the average watt hour or uh, kilowatt hours per mile. So I kind of wish that you could make that change in the system, but oh well. Still smoky, still not too bad. Cars riding great. These roads have really started to smooth out as we get into the Rockies. So hopefully that means that the ride will stay pretty smooth for a while, but only about 10 miles away from our next charger. So not too bad. Watson Lake, Watson Lake, DC fast charger, another CCS. I cannot wait till I get to a point where I can start using Tesla superchargers. Uh, Watson Lake, 50 kilowatt hour. 50 kilowatt hour charger. But that's not the big story here. There's actually something pretty cool here, but let me get plugged in. So something about Watson Lake that I've always loved is this institution here, if you will. It's pretty spectacular. It's called the Signpost Forest, and I've never actually been able to walk through here because when I'm doing this drive, usually I don't have the time to actually like pull over and walk through here. But since I have an hour, an hour in which I'm going to be stuck here anyway, I might as well walk through here and see what I can find. But there's some pretty cool stuff in here. Different signs from all over the world. Really awesome. As I walk through here, I'll have to take some videos or some pictures and see if I find anything really interesting. But I just always thought this was so cool to drive through here. I mean, there's one there from Limburg. I'm assuming that's in Germany. And then you got Ohio, Goldenhausen, Quebec. Got a UK. This is just awesome. I think this is just so cool. There's like a little stage down here. You just look around and see all the different signs from everywhere. I think it's so cool. And it literally is a forest. It literally is a forest. And then there's like benches for little performances and stuff. I'll have to look into this, but yeah, I just think this is so cool. I've never stopped in here before, but oh, it's fascinating. <laughs> I love this. Perry, Florida. Required licensing. Oh, so cool. I think it's so cool. Kind of walking through here, it is to take into stock and consideration sort of why people make the journey to Alaska and why I made the journey to Alaska my first time. Just wanting adventure and wanting to see a place that was different and a place that was wild and new experiences. And there are a lot of stories as you walk through here, you see on these plaques where it talks about people and their motivations and why they've made the journey. And there's a lot of romanticism in a lot of it. And if you think about sort of the history of Alaska and the Klondike gold rush and all those that made their way to Alaska to seek their fortunes back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and then later on, the people that made their way up there in the 70s for the construction of the oil, the Trans-Alaska oil pipeline. And then even recently, people like me that make their way up to Alaska for the summer season to work in tourism and to show off this amazing place that, you know, over the years that we've made our way up there, it's. It's a really special, it's a really special journey. It's not just about the amount of time that it takes to get up there. It's about, you know, the dedication that you're willing to put into it. And I think that's what this journey is for me. It's, you know, not only just another time that I've made the drive, but also kind of special because I think it shows that, you know, no matter what vehicle you're driving, if you're willing to put in the time and not only just 
willing to put in the time, but also really passionate about doing what you love and seeking new adventures. That's really what this is. It's, it's a new adventure because even though I've done this drive many times, it's the first time that I'm doing it like this. So it's kind of special. I've been to Seattle. That is not how fast they go there. Well, that was actually a fun little stop. I enjoyed that. So we're up to 78%, only took an hour and 10 minutes at 47 kilowatt hours on average. Lots of fun. Now we continue on to Northern Rocky Lodge and RV Park. Uh, two and a half hours. We need to be there by 11. It's currently 8.08, 160 miles. Let's go. later more moments later i have checked into northern rockies lodge here on muncho lake um roughly my notes 150 miles from fort nelson and today has been quite a few issues we had the bank issues this morning we had some charging issues this morning and then when i get here to northern rockies campground i had purchased this adapter it is a 30 amp to 50 amp NEMA 1450 adapter to go plug into the 1450 sort of outlet for my Tesla mobile charger. Over the course of the time that I was researching for this trip, I thought that this adapter would work. Apparently not. And that's not something that I discovered until tonight. Apparently there is a custom adapter that you have to buy that is custom wired for Tesla vehicles in order to be able to work with the mobile charger and the 1450 adapter or the 1450 plug. And that sucks because there is between the last char the last fast charger in Watson Lake to the next fast charger, which is just outside of Fort St. John is 543 miles. So there are level two chargers like J1772 chargers along the way. Um, but there's a 543 mile gap on the Alcan Highway where there's no DC fast charging. So this stop here in Muncho Lake is like absolutely essential because I left Watson Lake with 80%, I left with 80% battery from Watson Lake got here at 15% and there's no chargers between here and the next closest city, which is Fort St. Nelson. So this stop was absolutely critical and I was really banking on being able to get 30 amps tonight, charge up overnight, get to 80% and then go to Fort Nelson tomorrow and charge. So that really complicates things because that means that I'm going to have to charge tonight at 12 amps, which is what I'm doing now because I had to just plug into the regular 110 outlet get up in the morning go ask them at the front desk if i can plug into their 240 charger however long that takes tomorrow morning plug in charge up and then drive the 150 miles from here to fort nelson spend another six to eight hours there tomorrow charge up and then drive to fort st john from fort nelson to fort st john is 237 miles and given my experience so far where i only got 166 miles out of going from 80 percent to 15 percent today um i'm a little worried so i'm gonna have to charge to 100 percent in fort nelson tomorrow which i didn't want to have to charge to 100 percent again on this trip but i'm gonna have to and then i don't know set the cruise control to 50 miles an hour and just hope for the best to get to um Fort St. John, which even in Fort St. John, from what I'm hearing, the level three or the DC fast charger there isn't working. So I'd have to overnight in Fort St. John. So the next like 24 to 36 hours are looking like it's going to be very long and just a lot of waiting. So I'm going to go to bed, put a cap on day three. Best of luck. Eat your vegetables. Yay. Night.